I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and welcome to my show, The Dr. Leaf Show. If you haven't yet subscribed, just press the little button at the bottom of your screen, and you'll be notified when new episodes are out, and you'll be kept up to date on all things relating to the mind and mental health. In today's show, I'm going to be talking about your uniqueness, specifically your perfect you. And I'm going to be basing today's discussion on my book called The Perfect You, which includes the unique profile that I developed, and it's basically a blueprint for identity. So I want to identify, just, I just want to explain to you why I'm going to speak about this and what this means and how this can help you. Okay, so first and foremost, you are unique, and there's something you can do that no one else can do. Now that sounds cheesy, but let me tell you that there's so much science behind this, and let me tell you the history behind why I wrote this book. I practiced clinically for 25 years, and I work with people that really were challenged and had been very over-therapeutized and over-tested, over-diagnosed, kind of at the end of their tether. I would work with those kind of patients because no one else wanted to, so that's the kind of patient I had in my practice. And um, they would come to me with so many different assessments of everything that they couldn't do or their parents would bring them, depending on the age. And I always felt bad immediately starting a session with them by doing more testing to tell them they've got even more problems to add to the existing load of problems. So I looked back a few steps and decided I'm going to change my approach. I'm going to go against my, literally go against my training because my training at that, at, that, that I had gone through in the 80s was basically that our brain couldn't change that oh, the brain once damaged, you just had to pretty much teach people to deal with the damage and create a new way of thinking. And that, that sounded so lacking in hope. And there was, so, there was so little research in the 80s on the direct impact of mind and mind changing brain and the mind being separate to, uh, to the brain. And I'm a mind specialist. Over these years in clinical practice and research, I've really focused on understanding the science of thought in our mind and the mind-brain connection and our power that we have to change our brain. So how much, how, how much better to actually be able to help people in, in dire circumstances that are really challenged by all these things that have really hit them in their life and battling and all this over-therapeutizing, as I mentioned. So I decided to look scientifically at the uniqueness of man and I found a lot of research showing that it really is true, that the law of the brain is actually diversity and that if you really dig down in the research, even back in the 70s and 80s and 60s and even in the 50s, you would find that the research that was being done was actually showing that the way that you think has an impact on your behaviors and potentially an impact on the structure of, of how the brain is functioning and the structure of the brain. But because we didn't have the technology in the 80s to show that in the 60s and the 70s, etc., we it, it was more based on how people responded on a behavioral level. So in other words, how they would respond with their thinking and their feeling and their choosing and, and the emotions and cognition and academics and all that kind of stuff. So then the mid 90s, we started getting more advanced with more advanced technology that showed that you could, you could look inside the brain and you could see that the brain actually does respond to the mind. So based on all of that, I started doing research looking at the science of diversity of man, of how we are unique and how this all works. And I developed profiles where I would first, before I tested my patients to work out or evaluated them to work out all their problems and work out a plan to help them overcome their problems, I first did a profile that I had developed based on how the brain works, based on how thoughts form, based on how as humans we process information, so complex stuff that I simplified into a profile based on a theory that I had developed. And that looked at how the person uniquely f functioned or how they uniquely saw life or how they uniquely thought about things. And that's where I would start my my clinical intervention. The first thing I would always do with my patients was these these different profiles and I developed different versions of the profiles looking at different things and it was so successful. It was such a great place to start because it showed people that you know despite what's happened to you inside of you there's this 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 instinctual awareness that there's something amazing about you and there's something that you can do there's a drive there's a purpose there's a, a desire and an awareness that you can achieve more than what you maybe are achieving it currently and maybe life's hit you in many different ways and you feel well that's definitely not you but if you really think about it if you really dig deep deep down inside of you 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 know that there is a desire to improve we can see this in the self-help industry 
very, very strongly evidenced in the self-help industry, which is a $45 billion plus per annum industry, which tells us that people are constantly seeking self-help manuals and books to tell them how to achieve their potential because we know we have potential. So we look at neuroscience and we look at quantum physics and we look at psychoneuroimmunology and you look at neuropsychology and you look at psych all these incredible sciences. We see that yes, uniqueness is a fact, that the law of the brain is diversity, that there's something that you can do that no one else can do, that we start with a blueprint and then we develop that blueprint as we go through life. So a blueprint that is um, that aligns, and when I say blueprint, a blueprint for a way of thinking, a way of feeling, a way of making choices and decisions in our life that is actually really good. Now we see, if we look structurally at the human brain and body, that we actually wired for love. So this is what Nobel Prize winning scientists have actually found, is that our brain and our body are structured and wired for the positive. We have this natural optimism bias as humans on a psychological level, which is reflected in the structural level of the brain and the body and the way the cells work and the way the proteins work and the way genetic, genetic expression works and the way that our neurotransmitters work. Everything about us as humans has this perfect way of functioning, which gets disrupted through signals that are wrong or toxic signals. And those toxic signals could be brain damage from a car accident, could be chemicals you've inhaled, it could be medication you've taken, it could be toxic foods you've eaten. It And, and 75 to 98% of the signal are thoughts that are toxic. So now mind-brain research is very, very popular and um, it's re and I'm involved in mind-brain research and in understanding the non-conscious mind and the science of thought as a mind specialist, mental health, etc. And now the research is pouring out and has been since the mid-90s showing the mind-brain connection and showing the uniqueness of man and showing that as we think, feel and choose, we change the structure of our brain. To put it in fancy terms, this is called physical causality. Our choices have a physical effect on ourselves, our body, and how we function, and the world around us, and the people around us. I mean, you're thinking you're unique when you operate in your perfect, and I call this the perfect you, when you operate in the way that you design to function on a mental and a physical level, you impact the world in a very positive way. You have an incredibly positive impact on people. Just think about this. Just think about when something great happens or when you have this really great creative idea or something really good happens at school or work or something wonderful happens in your family. You know those moments of just like almost sheer bliss where things are just like so amazing and you feel fantastic and the people around you are smiling and, and you smiling and smiling is contagious and, and you feel great and this is an absolute direct evidence of mind-brain connection, mind-body connection, the way you feel makes you feel different. Your brain, if we had to check out your brain at that moment, we would see your brain functioning in a very, very healthy way, in a very positive way. So we know this instinctively. We also know that each of us sees the things differently because people will make comments and you've done it, I've done it. That's how I see it. So you might be in a conversation and you're talking about different viewpoints and you'll say, but that's how I see it. This is how I think about it. And that's so much, if you really listen to people, people say that a lot. And my patients used to say that a lot. And it used to be a situation of, hey, this is how I see life. Does anyone out there actually understand or care that this is how I see life? And that, that reality, which is a reality for every human, has been very um, blocked by a a worldview that has infiltrated education and science and medicine that uniqueness doesn't count we all there's one way of being normal and there's a, a model of, there's a model brain um, that that shows us that we should all opt an optimal way of brain functioning that will then produce this optimal person and if anyone deviates from that norm well then they're not you know they're, they're out of the normal so everyone's supposed to be like sheep being pushed into this little normal box but does normal really exist you know from my experience as a researcher and as a clinical clinician for 25 years and writing this is my, I've written 20 books in this in this field various different types of books I can tell you now that that's not the case and if you look at the research and I have thousands of references in my books and on my website drleaf.com you can go and have check these out and incredible doctors and people that I work with and the research shows we're not all like sheep we're all different we all thinking, we're feeling, we're choosing, we have a story, we have a context. 
And as we go through life, we have a lot of power over that context. We have a lot of power over the story of our life. We have a lot of uh, ability to, to change things in our life. We have hope, we have desire, and that's what this book's about. This book is about you understanding scientifically how you function in a normal way. In here, I've got one of my profiles that I love to do called the UQ. This used to take me about seven hours to do with my patients and used to be super long. So what I've done is trimmed it down, made it shorter, created an abridged version, and I put it in this book. And you can do this over as long as you want. You can take a day, an hour, five months. You can keep doing it over and over because each time that you dig into those questions, you're going to be tapping into the way that you perceive life, your unique perception, which no one else has because you see things differently. You're hearing me differently to the next person who's listening to me. We, we look, at, we look at, a, at a beautiful sunset and, and maybe you have 10 people looking at that beautiful sunset, but each of us is perceiving it in our own unique way and experiencing different emotions. And yes, there'll be commonalities. Wow, beautiful sunset. Wow, that makes me feel at peace. But each, each of us still will have a different brain representation of that, a different way of thinking. And the UQ, the Unique Qualitative Assessment, is a qualitative way of teaching you how to understand you because what I have found from my research and clinical experience is that when you understand you you start addressing something that is a crisis currently a global crisis and we all part of this global crisis and this global crisis is a lack of understanding of who we are which is affecting our self-esteem when you have low self-esteem when you don't truly understand your who you who you are or you're not operating or you've been blocked by trying to be someone else or you're trying to fit into this norm that people are telling you you should fit into or you're trying to be like that person whose book you've read or that person who you feel is a success and you want to emulate their lives when you do that you block who you are and you start getting frustration and you start creating dang brain damage if you work against your natural alignment you create brain damage, which makes you feel even worse. It makes you feel even more unhappy. It makes you feel more frustrated. This book is going to show you how to recognize scientifically who you are, how you function, the unique role that you play, the unique thought that you're thinking right at this moment that no one on this planet has ever thought, nor can they, because it's yours. It's your perception. It's your unique way that you build something into your brain. And we build thoughts in our brain, and then we speak and do from those thoughts. But the research also shows, which I talk about in my book, that we've been so influenced by this worldview that we've got to fit into the norm. And that's a philosophy, it's a worldview, and it's changing. It's changing, thank goodness, it may take a few more years, but it puts you in a box. So if something goes wrong in your life, you kind of get told, well, you've got the psychiatric illness, or you've got this label put on you, and you've got to fit into what's normal. Meanwhile, there is no normal, you're unique. And I would fill in this profile with my patients. And I had another version of the, I have another version of the profile, which you can actually pick up on my, my online program called The Perfectly You. And I have a new book coming out this year in September called Think, Learn, Succeed, which is going to have another version of the profile. And all of these versions of the profiles are ways of you understanding how you function. You see, when you, when you lack in yourself, when your self-esteem goes down, when your identity gets lost, this causes you to be jealous and envious of other people and, try to, and you try and be someone else. You make a lousy someone else. You make a great you. And as you find who you are, you change this. Now inside of yourself to help you, this is just so amazing. Our bodies help us stay in our perfect you. Our bodies help us align with our perfect you. So we have in built, in built into our bodies and our brains, we have these things called discomfort zones. And a discomfort zone is a physical reaction in your body, in your brain and your body in response to when you step out of your perfect you. So in this book, I train you in these concepts too. I teach you all the sciencey stuff about the perfect you and these wrong worldviews that have put us in a box. I give you the UQ profile and I also teach you about discomfort zones, these amazing things that help us to identify when we are out of our normal perfect you. And our perfect you, just by the way, is something that you're going to be developing throughout your life. You keep getting better and better at being you. So you're not going to have you're not going to reach a point where you have arrived. You are always developing and that's why I call it a blueprint. Okay, so these discomfort zones just to give you a brief overview of, of them, the most recognizable one is, this, is this, the stress response, where our body will start pounding out adrenaline and our heart starts pumping when we're in a challenging situation. And that may happen daily, it may happen frequently, infrequently, but we, we have the stress response in us that responds to things. And when we get this adrenaline pounding heart 
pumping reaction in our body. What I want you to focus on now is the words adrenaline pounding. You know when you're, you literally feel like this whoosh of energy. You almost can sometimes feel like you go, ah, oh, like someone's hit you in the gut. And your heart, you can, it feels like your heart's pounding out of your body. Your whole body tenses up, your shoulders tense up. And when that happens, that is your body telling you something is going on. And listen to it, listen to that response, learn to self-regulate, learn to self-evaluate. That's what I emphasize in this book. I give you checklists to help you do that. When you self-regulate, when you self-reflect, when you learn to listen to what's going on in your body, that then takes you to your thought life. Okay, something's going on. Adrenaline's pounding. Is this good? Is this bad? What am I thinking about? How am I reacting? Am I doing reacting correctly? Am I doing etc. So it helps you align yourself back because as you evaluate your body's reaction, so you evaluate your thoughts, so you evaluate the decision that you've just made or about to make, you evaluate your thinking, your feeling and your choosing, and you know when you make it when you make the right choice, you get a sense of peace, another discomfort zone. As you make the right choice, as you think correctly, feel correctly, and make the right choice, what happens is that your heart, for example, millions of things happen, but in your body but one of the things that does happen that's very easy to identify is that your heart will release a certain type of hormone called ANF which stands for atrial nutritive factor and that hormone pours through your body and you get that that sense of peace that sense of uh, uh, this, something's good this, this was the right way of thinking what I'm saying to you is that you have a unique way of thinking. You have a perfect you. You have a brilliant perfect you that is, is, is wired in you physically and it's in your mind. And as you go through life, as you learn to understand yourself and understand your bodily reactions, you can develop that. You can identify your purpose. You can become motivated. You can become driven and you can achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve in your life. And then that can spill over and bless other people because whatever you can do, no one else can do. So when you're doing it, everyone benefits. You can get over the jealousy, the envy, the frustration of trying to be like someone else because you make a lousy someone else. Now I've been teaching this for years and you can see I'm passionate about this, but I'm gonna end this broadcast by reading a study that came up in my feed. I do a couple of hours of brain research every day to keep up to date in my field. And this came through my field, through my feed, for, for a fantastic study from Yale University. And I was so excited that I wanted to just share this with you. And it's a it's Yale. This is the this is the headline. Yale neuroscientists debunked the idea that anyone is normal. Now already that got my attention, got your attention. No one is normal. So let me read on. A new study by Yale neuroscientists proves that there is no universal, unconditionally optimal profile of brain functioning. This means that differences often categorized as psychiatric illnesses may instead be strengths depending on a person's context. This is breakthrough stuff. I was thrilled to see this because I've been telling people this for years. For 30 years, this has been the message coming out of my mouth that we cannot say that there's one normal because each and every one of us is unique and each and every one of us has a story and life and a context. And when we go through things, we react. And sometimes we make bad decisions and we kind of act a little crazy. And that's all of us. It's not just some people out there, it's all of us. But when we are when we're told that we've got to conform to a so-called brain profile, and that's what billions of dollars have been spent on trying to identify the perfect brain and trying to make everyone fit into that perfect brain and trying to show that this is the way that our brain should function and if we don't function like that, this is what's gonna fire wrong in the brain and this is causing you to have this disease, it's a hope message. It is a waste of time as well and a waste of money and it's not accurate. You are brilliant. You are normal. And I'm going to end with this reading one more little section from the study. In other words, trying to define people one way from a psychiatric perspective is a failure of imagination and opportunity, which hobbles people rather than empowering them to inhabit their full selves. I want you to not be hobbled. I want you to inhabit your full self. You deserve to actually identify and find out your perfect you. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf.